began in 1965 when Larry Scott became bodybuilding's most acclaimed sportsman. In 1967, the myth, Sergio Oliva, began a three-year streak. The likes of this Cuban immigrant have never been matched. Then, an era in bodybuilding, the reign of Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Austrian Oak. From 1970 until 1975, he dominated the rapidly growing sport of international bodybuilding, the art of muscle building. Arnold's longtime best friend, former Olympic lifter Franco Colombo, followed after his buddy's example by taking home the Olympia title in 1976, only to relinquish it the next year to a not-so-massive but nearly symmetrically perfect bodybuilder named Frank Zane. For three years, even the biggest men in the sport could not intimidate him. Not until the 1980 comeback of Arnold, anyway, in a highly controversial decision, he won his seventh Olympia title, setting a still-standing Olympia record. And then came another comeback, the return of Franco Colombo after a six-year absence from the competitive arena. In 1982, Chris Dickerson won the only Mr. Olympia championship held in London. The former Mr. America winner was in the best condition of his life. The Lion of Lebanon, Samir Banut, conquered the Olympia stage in 83, but when he returned to the stage attempting to repeat his Olympian feat, it was quickly dashed by a first-time and youthful 1982 American national champion. Little did anyone realize that Lee Haney from Old Spartanburg, South Carolina, would dominate among a dais of giants, domination that would continue in six consecutive outings for bodybuilding's most coveted honor, Joe Weider's Mr. Olympia. Today, Lee Haney attempts to tie Arnold Schwarzenegger's seven-win record. Welcome to the Windy City and Joe Weider's 26th Annual IFBB Mr. Olympia Championships. With the world's best professional bodybuilders, including... Last year's runner-up, Lee Labrada, who's out to win it all today. From France, Mr. Symmetry, Francis Benfato in his first attempt. Former Mr. Olympia, Samir Benut is here trying to recapture the title. Sean Ray is determined to prove he can compete steroid-free after his embarrassing disqualification at last year's Arnold Schwarzenegger's Classic. Reigning champion Lee Haney is back. His goal this year is winning his seventh consecutive victory. Rich Gaspari is tired of placing second to Lee, so he's setting his sights on placing number one. At 245 pounds, Mike Christian will be the heaviest man in the contest. He's hoping it's enough to win this year. Then, three newcomers. Their superstar, Eddie Robinson, who will carry his fan appeal and massive physique onto the Olympia stage for the first time. Then, Frank Hildebrand from Germany in his first pro contest. And Jean Favre, last year's amateur world heavyweight champion from Switzerland. Also, Mr. Rift, Bavarian muscle man Andreas Munzer, who made his Olympia premiere last year. And bodybuilding's mad dog, the mighty Mike Quinn. If it's not his massive muscled physique, then sheer intimidation is what will win it for him today. If you waited until Saturday to get tickets, you were just plain out of luck because this historic Mr. Olympia was a total sellout. The contest was historic not only because Lee Haney was trying for his record-tying seventh win, it was also the first time that Mr. Olympia contestants would be drug tested. We began the drug control in 1985 with the Miss Olympia. And since that one competition, now worldwide in our 136 plus nations, we do hundreds of contests a year that are drug tested. We began the drug testing in trying to rid the bodybuilding sport of that drug reputation. Just like there is a drug problem in a lot of sports, of course, we have it in bodybuilding as well. We made a lot of great advances. We've had certain competitions where we had disqualified 30, 40 percent of the athletes. Now we have very few disqualifications, especially in those athletes that are used to being drug tested, such as the Mr. and Miss Universe um, and some of the national competitions. This is a big step to do drug control at the Mr. Olympia. We've been doing it at the, at the Miss Olympia for quite some time with good success and really not any failures, with the exception of some of the women's professional 
pro-world competitions. This being the second men's protested event, the first, of course, was the Arnold Classic. We had four positives in the male category there. We're hoping not to have too many at this competition as well. Since the athletes have had a year to get themselves together and get used to the type of drug control that we're doing, we do the same techniques as are used in Olympic competition. We use the Envopack system as well as hand currying the samples up to the Olympic Laboratory in Montreal. I think what you will see on stage are, are more defined, sleeker looking athletes with healthier looking skin and a much better attitude towards each other. I think a lot of the hostile feelings and, and situations we may have seen at some competitions will be dramatically decreased or even gone from this year's Mr. Olympia. I'm all for the drug test. I think it's really good for the sport in the aspect that a lot of bodybuilders, not bodybuilders, but the young teenagers and the mothers and fathers state that to be a bodybuilder, a lot of them do anabolic steroids. Well, this, I think, will prove to a lot of the parents and a lot of the kids that you really don't need anabolic steroids to get an awesome physique. Uh, and like I say, there's a lot of hardcore training and dedication, you know, that takes a part in, a, in getting a physique like this. Uh, I can't uh, say that you can say it's all by force, you know, from steroids or, or what have you, but this is our chance to prove to the sport that uh, we're going to be just as big, just as ripped without anabolic steroids. I'm for it. It's good that we get the, I give this out to the public to let them know, hey, we can do it. We're not going to change. We're still going to be as freaky as ever, and we'll prove it tonight at Olympia. You know, the big problem was a lot of the kids were, were using steroids because they thought that their bodybuilding champions, the only way they're going to get that way was through, you know, steroid usage. But with the bodybuilders today, it's the hard work that makes us champions. Anybody who's out that Mr. Olympia stage is not through steroids, but through hard work. And I feel, you know, myself, I'm, I'm going to be just as good or better this year with the drug testing. I have no problem with that. Pumping up backstage before pre-judging. The purpose of pumping up is to force blood into the muscles to create a look as full, hard, and muscular as possible. Some bodybuilders pump up more than others. Sergio Oliva used to pump up for a full two hours before going on stage. Most bodybuilders nowadays only pump up for 10 or 15 minutes, since overpumping is a good way to flatten out on stage. But when you watch competitors at the level of the Mr. Olympia, you get the feeling that they're pumping the weights as much to relieve the incredible nervous tension they're inevitably feeling as anything else. And after you pump up, you oil up. Then there's nothing left to do but go on stage to the roar of the excited fans and battle for the glory and recognition for which you've worked so long and hard. 